Now that the Mad Titan Thanos is finally vanquished, our surviving heroes can finally breathe before getting ready to fight the next massive multiverse threatening enemy. Bigger and badder villains are definitely on the horizon, and even the great Doctor Strange won't be able to stop them alone. Our acting Sorcerer Supreme may find himself assembling a task force similar to the comic book Defenders, but with some exciting new members in the MCU. Doctor Strange may not be the MCU's official Sorcerer Supreme yet, but at the very least, he's the current acting Sorcerer Supreme in the absence of the Ancient One. Ever since she was defeated, he stepped up to keep the planet safe and has continued his mastery of the mystic arts. So I keep a watch list of individuals and beings from other realms that may be a threat to this world. That unfortunate business with Thanos aside, it seems like he's done a pretty good job of keeping the MCU safe from any potential threat, at least so far. I have been falling for 30 minutes! But things are always changing in the MCU, and while he was ultimately defeated, Thanos really raised the bar for villainy. The next major universe-altering baddie is going to have to pose a greater threat than destroying half of all life in the universe, which is the kind of thing that will probably take a whole team of heroes to defeat. Not only is there now a vacant position for the next major villain, but the MCU got a whole lot bigger since we now know it's actually a multiverse. And protecting the multiverse is actually something Doctor Strange has been training for this whole time, even if he didn't know it. They allow us to travel throughout the multiverse. The adventures of Doctor Strange will continue in Multiverse of Madness, and although details are scarce so far, it's not hard to imagine that it will involve a multiverse and some madness. I know, I make this kind of quick-witted cinematic observation look easy, but it's really hard being so perceptive. But my point is, not only will more powerful villains inevitably emerge in the MCU, but Doctor Strange is going to have a lot more terrain to cover, and he's not going to be able to keep the multiverse safe all on his own. Even if his own hubris would have prevented him from seeking help at one point, I'm guessing that'll be less of an issue ever since the current hero lineup tried and failed to stop Thanos the first time around. Surrender, Stephen. Silence your ego, and your power will rise. We all know and love the Avengers, but now let's take a look at the Defenders from the pages of Marvel Comics. This group was formed in the wake of an attack from a group of powerful extra-dimensional beings called the Undying Ones. And as you probably guessed from the name, they were really hard to get rid of. But that's part of Doctor Strange's job, so he got some help from Hulk and manipulated Namor into lending a fin to the cause. Since they worked together so well, Doctor Strange decided to make their arrangements slightly more formal by calling them the Defenders and agreeing to get together the next time someone showed up to threaten the universe. Like most superhero groups, they've gone through plenty of membership changes and interpersonal conflicts, and now it could be time for them to make their MCU debut. The stakes have been raised in the post-endgame MCU, and it might not be a coincidence that the Hulk has become much easier to handle. Going from this to this. Green. Did you get that? I love the all-out rage machine that is the Incredible Hulk as much as the next person, but you gotta admit, Smart Hulk is a lot more appealing as a potential teammate. Doctor Strange has the Mystic Arts pretty much covered, but he could undoubtedly use some scientific assistance from time to time, and that is Bruce Banner's area of expertise. Smart Hulk seems like a likely Defender contender. <laughs> defender contender. Uh, but let's talk about another founding member, Namor. He may be reluctant to lend a hand, but there's no denying he's an effective combatant who has dominion over the sea, which could come in handy. There have been numerous hints that Namor exists in the MCU, including the most recent and obvious one in Avengers Endgame when Okoye mentioned an underwater earthquake off the coast of Wakanda. Now, you might be thinking I'm just seeing what I want to see here, which is a fair critique, even if it does hurt my feelings a little bit. <laughs> But that's not the case this time, because when asked if this easter egg was Namor related, Endgame co-writer Stephen McFeely said, Sometimes you plant seeds, sometimes they grow. It may have been a bit enigmatic, but it's definitive enough for me and my desire to see Namor on the big screen. And since he has uh, issues with Wakanda in the comics and is a potential Defender recruit, we could see him in Multiverse of Madness, or at some point in Black Panther 2. Hulk and Namor are exciting, but still obvious choices, and I'm guessing the big screen Defenders will have quite a few more members. Luckily, plenty of suitable non-Avenger candidates are going to be joining the MCU. One of them is Mark Spector, also known as the Moon Knight, who's been hinted about since all the way back in Captain America the Winter Soldier. What targets? You! 
The TV anchor in Cairo, the Undersecretary of Defense. Finally, it was announced that the Moon Knight would be joining the MCU with his own series on Disney Plus set to premiere in 2022. He's got plenty of impressive powers, but it might be his knowledge of ancient Egypt that makes him an attractive ally to Doctor Strange. If you're thinking this kind of info wouldn't be very useful to superheroes, I'd say I hate to correct you, but who am I kidding? I love doing that. Because if Doctor Strange gets the notion that Kang the Conqueror is a threat, suddenly Mark Spector's brain is as essential as his brawn. Kang's exactly the kind of major, multiverse-threatening villain fans are expecting as we head into the fourth phase of Marvel movies. And a time-traveling stop to ancient Egypt was an important part of his journey into villainy. Time travel was a major addition to the MCU, but you know what this universe really needs? Vampires. And not just because it'll make my Avengers Twilight fanfiction that much closer to being canon, but because if there are vampires, then naturally there must be a vampire hunter, such as... It's Blade. It's the Daywalker. A Blade reboot is part of Marvel's long-term plans, with Mahershala Ali set to star as the titular Daywalker. He has a unique set of skills which makes him the perfect foil for vampires, as well as extensive knowledge of how to track and destroy them. These stats would make him a great addition to the MCU Defenders. And speaking of famous franchises getting a reboot, let's talk Ghost Rider. I got one last ride left in me. Well, hopefully a Ghost Rider with way better special effects. There have been rumors of Ghost Rider joining the MCU for quite some time, with the possibility of Keanu Reeves as Johnny Blaze. But to be fair, I think Keanu Reeves is mentioned any time there's an open role in Hollywood based on the amount of films he's been in. Some fans suspect Hulu's Ghost Rider series was cancelled because Marvel Studio head Kevin Feige had bigger things in mind for the character. There are even rumors that the Multiverse of Madness will set up the team known as the Midnight Suns, a group which has also counted Doctor Strange and Blade among their members. Let's face it, if the Marvel Cinematic Universe wasn't constantly under attack, the movies would be incredibly boring. But it's possible that recent events may have caused an increase in the amount of and caliber of villains. Things got pretty wacky wild and weird during the Infinity Saga, and it may have drawn some unwanted attention. Our heroes goofed up the timeline. They engaged in a massive over-the-top battle and learned that Thanos destroyed the Nova Corps, the Infinity Stones, and wiped out half of all life in the universe. Bringing them all back and putting a PR spin on the event by calling it The Snap isn't enough to negate the ramifications of this scenario, which could be quite dire in this situation. It's possible all this activity could draw unwanted attention towards Earth. In Captain Marvel, it was established that our planet was too minor and unexciting to gain the attention of most alien races, or at least that was the case in the 1990s. So it's possible that villains might have overlooked our planet in the past, but now there might as well be a Please Invade Us sign floating around our atmosphere. Atmosphere. One possible enemy we could see in the near future is Galactus, and the good news is that he definitely wouldn't want to invade Earth. The bad news is, of course, that he'd want to gobble it up, and he's the kind of villain that it takes a whole team of heroes to hold back. There's also the Beyonder, who's an incredibly powerful member of an ancient race who was inadvertently dragged to Earth in the comics. Once he got there, well, you can probably imagine how well he was able to fit in and not wreak havoc. The Beyonder did find Earth interesting, so much so that he wanted to see some of our mightiest heroes and villains face off against each other. Well, that's a feeling we can all relate to. Most of us don't have the power to transport a bunch of heroes and villains to Battleworld and watch them duke it out. And what do you know, this is exactly what happened in the Secret Wars storyline in the comics, and it's something a lot of fans wouldn't mind seeing on the big screen. Because the only thing better than an entire fictional universe of powerful characters is seeing them show off their skills in battle against each other. Considering current events in the MCU, it would be downright foolish for Doctor Strange not to start planning ahead and assembling a group to call upon in case of emergencies, and he may be many things, but foolish isn't one of them. While I am confident that the Avengers will rebuild, they're in shambles right now to say the least. Iron Man, Black Widow, and Vision are gone. Captain America's retired, and Peter Parker just got out of Spider-Man, so he's probably going to be a little bit busy. With the whole multiverse to take care of, Doctor Strange is going to need some help. When Brian Braddock, better known as Captain Britain, was tasked with keeping Earth safe, he and all the alternate versions of himself formed the Captain Britain Corps in order to protect the entire multiverse. Doctor Strange could borrow from this idea at some point in the future, but for now, a smaller team of Earth-bound defenders seems like a solid plan. After all, I can only imagine that the MCU will keep growing and changing, and someday he may decide that he does need multiple versions of himself like Captain Britain. Kinda takes the expression, if you want something done right, do it for yourself to a whole new level, huh? 
So, do you think the Doctor Strange is going to form a task force? Or will he try and protect the multiverse all on his own? Share your predictions and your Dream Team Defender lineup with us in the comments section down below. Make sure to click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications for more new videos from us here at CBR. Bye for now.